In a world undergoing a magical revolution, a young orphan named Lu Shu discovers he possesses extraordinary abilities. Together with his sister, Lu Xiaoyu, they embark on a thrilling adventure to hone their powers and overcome challenges. Follow Lu Shu as he faces rivals, encounters supernatural events, and navigates a changing world. Will he unlock his true potential and emerge victorious against formidable opponents? Let's find out! Welcome back to Anime Sareo. Watch the whole recap first and participate in our little game in the comments at the end of the video. And now, back to the show. Heavy rain splatters on a town's rooftop as a long-haired woman with a baby makes it through its alleys. She takes shelter outside a woman's house, who invites her in. She hands over the baby, who wears a walnut-shaped necklace to the woman, and tells her she will be back with the medicine, only to never return. The scene switches to a Chinese festival, where the baby wearing the necklace is now all grown up into a young boy. His name is Lu Xu. A girl, Lu Xiaoyu, accompanies him and they both seem to have a good time. They come across a firebender who can make fire move spectacularly and leaving the audience baffled. As Xu and Xiaoyu make their way to the front of the crowd, Xu gets hit by the fire and for a few seconds gets transported to another dimension. He sees a sword there and his necklace lights up. However, when he comes back, it is like nobody has noticed anything. Xiao Yu, impressed by the firebender's tricks, convinces Xu to sneak backstage and learn about the magician's trick so they could earn money. There, Xu witnesses a few men surrounding the magician. One of them shoots a taser gun at the firebender, who falls unconscious. When Xiao Yu gasps, the men take notice and convince the two that they were police and only checking for something. Xu makes an excuse that the two got lost while looking for the bathroom and the men let them go. On their way out, they meet a guy who inquires about what happened inside. However, the two ignore him and move on. Back home, Xiao Yu begs Xu to bring her instant noodles. After much convincing, Xu agrees. On his way to the store, he thinks about the orphanage. He remembers the time he was sick or bullied and Xiao Yu took care of him. While he is crossing the road, a truck hits Xu. Blood covers his face as he lies unconscious. It seems as if he has died. However, it's not all over yet. Weird symbols appear as Shu's necklace lights up, and his body rises from the ground. All his organs are made anew, it is as if he has been given a new life. He wakes up to find himself unscathed. He scares the bus driver away and sees some numbers on top of the bus driver's head too. He realizes that like the firebender and the many people who were suddenly getting famous on the news for their superpowers, he had one too. As he makes his way home, Shu also notices numbers on top of all the people he encounters on his way. While he's sitting alone in his room, Shu sees the screen with the strange symbols again. Now he sees the names of all the people he had encountered on his way, along with the numbers atop their heads. He realizes that the numbers were points he was awarded for triggering negative emotions in anyone. He calls himself the Demon King and wonders how the points will help him and notices a lucky draw. The first time he wins the lucky draw, he is awarded a stellar apple. When he bites into it, he feels a strong feeling of comfort spread all over his body. Shu plays again and is awarded a script that has the song his mother used to sing to him written over it. He again gets transported to another dimension and wonders how cool it all is. While Xiao Yu and Xiong are eating, they see the news of a fire in the city center. Shu goes to his roof to check the situation and sees the men who had shot at the firebender there. Shu tries to hide himself from the men only to be discovered when he slips and makes a noise. However, they let him go once he tells them that he came up to pick radishes. Once inside his house, Xiao Yu and Xiong are surprised to find the firebender lying unconscious in their yard. When Xu realizes that the firebender is only pretending, he says mean things to him so he may accumulate points. The firebender tries to burn him, but the fire doesn't hurt Xu at all. Xu continues to find opportunities to annoy people and get more points. At school, he hears of awakenings of people who suddenly possess a superpower. Li Qi, Xu's classmate, raises panic in school when he is suddenly awakened and tries to throw a man from the school rooftop. Xu heroically jumps in to save the situation. He also realizes that he can figure out other awakened people, and as such, he figures that another one of his classmates, Cao Qingzi, is awakened too. Shu's school conducts a blood test to check the awakened, and even though Shu tries to resist, he is the first one to get it done. Shu returns home to find a sick Xiao Yu. He wonders if feeding her the stellar apple will make Xiao Yu better, and it works. She cannot get enough of the magical fruit. The man who called himself a police officer comes to Shu's school and calls out a couple of names of students who will now take the Dao Yuan class. 
Shu is also one of them. At an open site, two men are facing each other. Suddenly, another man appears and tries to fight the one in the robe. He is vanquished instantaneously. A newcomer, Jiang Shui, joins Shu in class. Later on, in the Dao Yuan class, the man from the police introduces himself as Shi Fei. He says that all the students assembled there had some levels of sodium-potassium alloy in their blood. Since the past 17 months, the alloy's reactions with blood have resulted in biological changes. He says that everyone is at a different level, depending on their sodium levels. The levels start from A, the highest alloy level, and up to F, the lowest and Shu's level. At home, Shu's stellar fruit supply gets exhausted, and he unlocks a new food, stinky tofu. While he's playing around the screen, a light hits Xiao Yu, who is transported into another dimension. Shu tells her that she is being awakened. Desperate to unlock a new food item soon, Shu sells off his tofu. He also looks for new ways to annoy people, so he may get himself some more points. Shu learns about the Spirit Stone, which indicates that you have been awakened and gives you more power. He practices for a while and gets one too. He realizes that he is on his way to unlock his real potential and loves it. Shu also learns about the Heavenly Network, a group of all the awakened, and is surprised when its leader visits his neighbor, Mr. Lee, a practitioner of martial arts. The leader asks Mr. Lee to join them as the director, but he refuses. Considering Mr. Lee's connection to the Heavenly Network, Shu asks Mr. Lee to help him and Xiao Yu with sword fights and studies. He cannot wait to fully master his abilities. After Mr. Lee is done teaching and constantly being annoyed with Xiao Yu, he shows Shu the technique of power of blue which can cut anything. He asks Shu to practice it with a sword and feels himself cutting the air. Shu spends the whole day practicing. He tells Mr. Li that he only wants to live a good life with Xiao Yu and that is his only responsibility and the only thing that matters to him. A man from the Heavenly Network again visits Mr. Li and asks him to join him. He reminds him that the ruins are about to open and that the foundation should not interfere with the network's work. Mr. Li asks Xiao Yu and Shu to take the sodium-potassium alloy test. However, both of them are surprised to find that their level is not indicated on the instruction paper. Shu wonders if there is a level higher than A. While Xiao Yu is sleeping, she is transported to another dimension and stands up in her sleep. Shu wakes her up and she excitedly tells him that she has reached her awakening. Xiao Yu tells him that her superpower is bringing dead things back to life. However, if she brings one thing to life, the old one dissipates. Shu takes Xiao Yu to a slaughterhouse so she may practice her power on pigs. After spending a lot of time trying to figure out Xiao Yu's superpower, Shu realizes that she only creates a body of energy and doesn't bring things back to life. Shu is happy to see Xiao Yu enjoy scrambled eggs with tomatoes and wishes he could buy the house for her. On the TV, Shu watches the news of a robbery, which he also sensed. He goes out to look, but Xiao Yu tells him that she felt it too and joins him. They are soon faced with a level C practitioner. Shu and Xiao Yu see Shi Fei and his team combating the level C practitioner until police cars pull up and the practitioner and his companions take refuge in a building. The heavenly network pulls up efficiently and when the practitioner tries to escape, a battle ensues between them. Shi Fei sees Shu in his blue shield and asks his companions to chase him. However, Shu's new sword skills help him outsmart them. He slithers through all the heavenly network members until they have given up. The practitioner then overpowers Shi Fei until he collapses. Shu shows up and manages to vanquish the evil practitioner all alone. This is the first time Shu uses his powers to emerge victorious against an opponent. Later, Shu takes Xiao Yu for dinner and on the way, Xiao Yu practices her new superpower. Over dinner, Shu tells Xiao Yu not to disclose her superpower to anyone and while they hold hands, he promises to buy a house for her. All hell breaks loose at the Heavenly Network's meeting. Everyone is confused about who showed up and why he had blue skin all around him. Li Yi Xiao worries that the ruin will soon open. Xiao Yu shocks Shu when she revives the level C practitioner's body form. She also tells him that she can see through his latest memories and thus knows where he hid his money. She asks him if they could keep it for themselves and buy the house. However, Shu tells her that there is no need to use the wrong means to buy the house. Li Yi Xiao, a member of the Heavenly Network, becomes the new director of the school and introduces himself in an awkward speech. He is a level B practitioner and also becomes the ultimate superior of the students of the Dao Yuan class. He asks the students to report to him if they notice a practitioner who knows swordsmanship, basically if anyone figures out Shu's awakened powers. Shu asks Zhang if he could sell his silver stones in a black market. Zhang sets him up with a dealer and with the money in his account, Shu buys Xiao Yu a smartphone. He also promises her that he would buy her the house the next day, to which Xiao Yu erupts in tears of happiness. 
Shu receives a call asking him to come to school immediately as the school car is departing, and Shu texts Xiao Yu to stay safe at home and lock the door. Where is Shu going, and what is the school making the students do? I guess we'll find out in the next episodes. As for now, drop us a like and let's play our little game in the comments. Tell us how would Shu earn the most points from you by annoying you. For me personally, it would be watching an anime with him telling me how it is different from the manga, like every other second. Anyway, comment yours down below and we'll find out who earns the most points. Also, subscribe to Anime Sereo for more awesome animes like this to watch on your feet. With that said, we'll see you in the next one. Peace!